Bank. 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 Boxing. We back in this motherfucker, man. It's Bank. Bank. Boxing. First episode, man. And I'm psyched to death. I'm psyched to death because I've been trying to start a boxing podcast for a minute now. And it's finally here. The Boxing Podcast I'm going to talk all my shit Because y'all know me Y'all follow me I talk my boxing man It go in one ear and out the other For a lot of y'all niggas But a lot of people like it man I got a lot of people turned on To the sport of boxing And a lot of people Wanted me to hop on here And talk my shit And that's what I'm here to do man We finna get on here We finna talk boxing Let's, Let's get into it baby Let's get into it Let's get into it So yeah y'all know me Jay Follow me on Instagram J H Junior underscore. You know what I'm saying? I also have another uh podcast, simple as that, that I do with my boy Floyd. Simple as that podcast. Make sure y'all check that out too. But like I said, today we're talking about Bink Bink Boxing. Now, where I get the name Bink Bink from, Bink Bink comes from just me. Honestly, I got Bink Bink from my dad when um I was a kid, right? And uh he was teaching me how to play running back. He'd be like, You gotta hit him with a bink, hit him with a bink. And you know, he'd be out there showing me how to uh, bink bink bink. You know, you <laughs> He talking about hitting with the bink, bink, bink And get up field, get up field Cut across the grain and get up field, son North and south, get north and south Bink, bink, north and south That's where I got bink, bink from So when, I, when I'm watching the fight, man And I see somebody getting tagged And you know, they, they against the ropes And they, uh, 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 and they getting ripped up Bink, 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 bink You know what I'm saying? That's where I got bink, bink from And Muggs thought it was funny When I was commentating on uh, some of the fights Posting on my Instagram story And I was saying bink, bink And he's like, yo, you the Yo, that shit hilarious. You need to start bank bank. And I say, you know what? Y'all right. Bank bank boxing. So that's where I got the name from. Bank bank boxing. So let's get into it, man. So last weekend, we had a fight on the zone. Great fight between Virgil Ortiz and Maurice Hooker. One of the one of the best fights of the year so far, in my opinion. Um, Virgil Ortiz answered a lot of questions in my book, answered a lot of questions, and he left some unanswered. A lot of unanswered questions, okay? So we got Virgil Ortiz, 17-0, 17 knockouts. Perfect record. 100% knockout ratio. The Bama nice. I've been trying to tell y'all for two years. Vic, not Victor. Virgil Ortiz is nice. He's promised. He got promise. He's destined. He's going to be one of the top welterweights in a couple years. He's going to be that dude in a couple years. Maurice Hooker just recently moved up to 147. Uh, naturally a junior welterweight, 140 pounds. Record 27 and 2 with three draws, 18 knockouts. Good step up fight for Virgil. It was a good test for him. Very good test. You know, Maurice Hooker, 80 inch reach. Virgil T, 70 inch reach. You know what I'm saying? So he has to navigate his way in there and dissect Maurice and how, how he going to get inside. And he showed that with his, he showed a little bit of peekaboo style, like the Mike Tyson peekaboo, where he's, he worked his way in. Uh, he's working his way in there, uh, uh, getting to the body. I loved how Virgil got to the body. The body work was pretty. Man, look, every time I watch a fight, I'm like, go to the body, go to the body. It sounds cliche. Everybody always says, jab, go to the body, jab, jab, get behind the jab, work off the jab, go to the body. It's cliche, but it works. If you watch all the great fighters, they do the fundamentals. It's like in any sport. You watch all the the great quarterbacks. The fundamentals are pristine. The greatest Safeties, they got the, the best fundamentals. Linebackers, the best fundamentals. The same in boxing, man. If you have great fundamentals, you're going to be a great fighter. Uh, Virgil Ortiz, I keep trying wanting to say Victor Ortiz. I keep wanting to say Victor. His name is Virgil. Great body work. Great body work. He was getting touched up. He was getting touched up. I credit that to Maurice Hooker's reach. Tennis reach advantage. I credit that to the reach. It was hard to get through them jabs. Maurice early in the fight, he had he had Virgil where he wanted him. I still had Virgil rent, winning a lot of those early rounds because he was doing more work. He was the busier fighter. He was pressing the pace. He was trying to get inside. He was, he was landing his shots to the body. But Maurice was doing work. He was doing work. He was sticking him with the jab. He was moving. He was countering him, hitting him with, with the uh, check hooks when Virgil tried to come inside, T- jabbing him to the body, jabbing him upstairs. Virgil's face was beat up, bruised up. He was, he was torn up. But the work that Virgil was doing, wicked body shots. Man, you could hear the body shots through the camera. I'm talking about he was digging him out to the body. And I think that slowed Maurice down a lot. 
and slowed him down. And you seen him around the middle of the fight. He kind of he didn't he wasn't on his bike like that. He he wasn't he wasn't using the ring. He wasn't you know he wasn't getting out of danger and circling away from uh, Virgil's uh, uh, power shots, power punches. He, he wasn't able to do that. And he kind of sat in there. I think he got. He got lackadaisical and wanted to stand in the pocket with Virgil, which I was like, no, don't do that. You got Virgil where you want him. You got Virgil right where you want him. Because I don't know if y'all peep. I don't know if y'all peep. He had Virgil hurt in the middle of the fight. He had him hurt. I don't know if y'all peep, but he had Virgil hurt. I don't remember what round it was, but he hit Virgil with something substantial. And you seen Virgil's head snap, and he kind of he kind of buckled him. He buckled him. And he, and he fell back into the ropes, and then he was talking shit at the end of the round. You know what I'm saying? That was that was that was that was my old shit, like Virgil in trouble moment. Virgil in trouble. Virgil's a warrior though. Came back out the next round. His face was looking beat up. He came back out the next round, and he pressed the pace. He pressed the pace. He's peekabooing. He's in there. He's he's walking through jabs. He's walking through the fire, and he's getting to that body. He's coming back upstairs with it. Bing, 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 bing. Virgil put it on him. Hell of a fight, man. It was a hell of a fight. Hell of a card, man. Unfortunately, the fight ended with Maurice Hooker breaking his hand. I didn't see, I didn't see the punch. He broke his hand. He said he hit him in the shoulder, head, whatever he said at the end of the fight. The fans started booing him. And he said, fuck y'all. <laughs> he said, fuck y'all. <laughs> hey, yo. I was dying. My son was on the couch laying next to me sleep, and I'm dying. I'm like, yo, the zone is funny as hell tonight. The zone was funny that night. So Maurice Hooker gets up there and says, fuck y'all to the crowd. Virgil Ortiz tries to speak Spanish and botches it. Like, you could tell, like, he was, he was flowing, and then he got tight. He was like, uh, fuck. <laughs> Completely dropped the ball. Then the announcers at the end of the fight talking about, he said, uh, what did he say? He said, what do you think about uh, Virgil Ortiz stepping up? Da, 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 da. He said, what do you think about going to get drunk? He said, we in Texas. It's wide open. <laughs> Let's go hit the bar. I was like, son, the zone hilarious. They funny tonight. But, man, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. Great fight, man. Virgil did his thing, but he left a lot of questions for me. Left a lot of questions for me. Much respect to uh, Maurice Hooker, man. He laid it on the line. He was willing to stand in the line of fire and trade with a heavier puncher. He's not even a natural 147 pounder. He's a natural junior welterweight. He's a natural 140 pounder. You know what I'm saying? Virgil is a big 147 pounds. He's right up there with like Spence and and uh and uh Terrence and them. He's right up there with Crawford and Spence as far as size. He he's big for 147. He could easily go up to 154. Maybe 160 later on in his career, depending on how he pans out and how he performs. But he's definitely a big 147 pounder, and I think that's that's where he's going to be for a while. But definitely big ups to Maurice Hooker, man. You put on a hell of a fight. You got a fan in me, man. Your your demeanor, your personality, how you carried the crowd, man. I rock with it, man. You got a fan in me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to keep watching your fight. I hope you have a speedy recovery and you come back and you and you put on another great show for the fans, man. This, this is what we want, man, in boxing. That's what we want. We want to see excitement. We want to see, we want to see boxing. We want to see, we want to see the skill. We want to see the art. It's beauty, man. It's beauty in boxing. There's so much beauty in boxing. But yeah, let's get back to it, man. Virgil Ortiz answered a lot of questions, left some question marks. He left some question marks, okay? The fact that Maurice was able to put hands on him as frequent as he was, as frequent as he did, left a lot of questions. Before the fight, I don't know if y'all remember, before the fight, I said, I posted, I said, if Virgil Ortiz goes in here and gets rid of Maurice Hooker in a crazy fashion, give him Terrence Crawford. Give him Terrence Crawford. He didn't do that. The fight was stopped because Maurice hurt his hand. That fight would have went 12 rounds. That fight would have went 12. It would have been a, a, a brutal fighting, punching, banging 12 rounds. But that fight was going to go 12 rounds. I don't think he would have knocked Maurice Hooker out within 12. But, you know, he was landing heavy shots, but Maurice was eating them joints. He was eating them joints, you know, and he was throwing back. And he hurt Virgil. He hurt Virgil. So Virgil, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never seen him hurt. But when Maurice caught him, I was like, oh, shit, this is a first for him. Just like when Ryan Garcia got dropped by Luke Campbell, it was, it was a first. And everybody stood up and said, oh, shit, what's he going to do? He proved it. Virgil proved that he can he can he can come back from that. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely don't think 
Virgil Ortiz is ready for Terrence Crawford. He's not ready for Errol Spence. He has to mature more in the ring. His body needs to mature. His strength needs to mature. Because if he's going to get in there with some dogs like Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence, he's going to have to really, really, really work on his boxing IQ, his ring IQ, and really add a different dynamic to his game. He's kind of one-dimensional. We know he can punch. The boy can punch. We know he has a chin. Check. And we know he's game. Like he's not going back down. He's going to press you. He's going to pressure you. He's going he's gonna to make you fight his fight because he's going to be in your chest, just like Mike Tyson. He, he's, a, he's a miniature. He look, that fight, he, he looked like a mini Mike Tyson. He was walking through fire, walking through shots to, to, to land his shot, and he was going to the body vicious. He's a mini Mike Tyson in my eyes, and that's not enough to beat a Terrence Crawford, a guy that can switch orthodox and uh, southpaw on you in a heartbeat and be powerful with both hands. That's not enough to beat a Spence who's a big, physical, welterweight. It's not enough. You're not, you're not going to push Spence around the ring. Sean Porter to try it. And we seen what happened to him. That was a hell of a fight. That was a back and forth fight. Banged out the whole time. It was nothing but bank, bank, bank all over the ring. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was nothing but bank, bank all over the ring. That was a hell of a fight, man. You're not pushing Spence. I don't see Virgil Ortiz pushing Spence around the ring like he was doing to Maurice Hooker. Because Spence is a big dude. It's, it's allegedly he walks around like 190 in between fights. And cuts to 147 How? I'm 190 I ain't weighed 147 since the 10th grade That's crazy man I don't know how these fighters do it If y'all, if y'all know a secret man Put me on I would like to know I would like to get a little cut Get a little shredded Summertime coming up I like to get in fighting shape If y'all know the secret Put me on You know what I'm saying But nonetheless man Virgil Ortiz Did his damn thing He put on a hell of a show Not ready for Spence not ready for Crawford, but I tell you who he is ready for, who I would like to see him against. I would like to see him against a Keith Thurman, who's only lost this to a Manny Pacquiao. Another hell of a fight if y'all missed that one. Go on YouTube and watch it. I would like to see him against a, a, a Jerron Boots Ellis. That's a good fight. What's his record? He 26 and 0 with 24 knockouts. He needs a name. He needs a, a marquee name on uh, his record book. He needs a marquee fight that's going to put him over the edge to get that title shot at a top contender. That'll be a great fight for uh, Virgil. Another great fight, Danny Garcia. Put him in there with Danny. Granite Chin Danny. Philly Danny. Cool Danny. I met Danny Garcia. Shout out Danny, baby. Cool dude, man. Hell of a dude, man. Great guy. Hell of a fighter, too, at that. Even better fighter, man. Like just That's, that's a fight I would like to see. Virgil Ortiz and Danny Garcia. I think it'd be fireworks. I think it'd be fireworks. I know people got a lot to say about Danny, how he, oh, he froze up against Spence. He froze, he da 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 Y'all don't understand. Spence is a big dude, and he hits hard. He hits hard. It's like standing, it's like going out to the golf range. You stand out there by the, by the target signs, and people just hitting, shooting golf balls at you. You just going to stand there? <laughs> you ain't going to stand there and eat golf balls to the face, pause. You know what I'm saying? You're going you gonna to move, you move out the way. You're not, you're not going to be game to just be standing there. You know what I'm saying? Spence hits hard. You know what I'm saying? And he showed that. It showed it was showing on Danny's face. He was he was marked up. You know what I'm saying? And that that ain't taking nothing away from Danny. Danny's a hell of a champion. Hell of a champion. Two division world champion. Maybe three, soon to be three. Says he's moving up to 154. Some contenders at 154. You got Charlo. Uh, a whole bunch of guys at 154. Uh, uh Jason Rosario, Jared Hurd, all them dudes at 154. That's a big jump. That's a big jump, man. But he game. He's a fighter. I support it. I want to see it. You know what I'm saying? But I would like to see him at 147 with Virgil Ortiz. That'd be a that'd be a hell of a fight. That'd be a hell of a fight, and it'd be a, a good a good measuring stick to see if Virgil is what Virgil says he is and what we think he is. I think that's a hell of a fight, man. Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia, Jerron Boots Ellis, Sean Porter. That's another grudge match in the trenches. Football game where it's muddy and it's raining and you can't throw the ball so a straight run ball, run the ball every play, first, second, third, and fourth down, you run the ball, smash mouth. That's what kind of fight that would be, a smash mouth fight because Sean Porter is a dog. He's strong and he's going to bang out to. He's going to bang out to. And I would love to see that fight, man. Those are measuring sticks that I would like to see Virgil Ortiz kind of measure himself against. Honestly, I think he can win a lot of those fights. I think he can win a lot of those fights. But, um, 
We just have to see. We have to see. But I have nothing but the highest praises for Virgil Ortiz, man. He's a hell of a fighter, man. Chin, heart, all of that, man. And um, let's put him in there, man. Let's make these fights happen. Let's make all this shit happen, man, for the boxing fans, for the boxing community. On a second note, let's get off of Virgil Ortiz for a second. Let's talk about what the fans want to see. Boxing fans, what's the number one fight y'all want to see that's not going to happen no time soon? I'll answer that for you. Spence and Crawford. Both of them was at the fight, at the Virgil Ortiz fight. Crawford got interviewed. He said, that fight ain't never going to happen. <laughs> hey, Buzz said, that shit ain't never going to happen. He said, I moved past that. Never going to happen, though. No. Come on, man. We want to see the fight. We want the fans want to see the fight. Y'all swear. Every time you see fighters come on an interview, every time you see promoters, oh, we're going to get the fans what they want. You know what I'm saying? We all about the fans. You know, we want to do what the fans want us to do. You know, whatever y'all, you know, we doing what the fans want. The fans is clamoring for a Spence Crawford fight. That is a mega, mega, mega fight. That's one of the biggest fights of the decade. In my opinion, that fight is bigger than a Pacquiao Mayweather jump. And y'all, I'm going to catch flack. I'm going to catch flack for saying that. But that, that fight is bigger than because they both in their primes. Crawford's in his prime. Spence is in his prime. They in their athletic primes. Both of them. Imagine, when's the last time we had a fight where two fighters were in their primes and they got it rocking? Now I'm waiting. You let me know. You tell me. You tell me. I can't name it. I can't name it, man. That would be a hell of a fight, man. That'd be a hell of a fight, a banging fight. All you're going to hear from me is bink, 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 the whole night. And there's no reason why it can't happen. Actually, there's a lot of reasons why it can't happen. Let me stop lying on here. There's a lot of reasons why that fight can't happen. We can talk about Bob Aaron. We can talk about purse split. We can talk about a lot of things, man. We can talk about ego. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things we can talk about, man. All I know is, from my perspective, that fight needs to happen. We need to see that fight. Spence, if you come across this, you come across Bank Bank, man, I'm a hell of a fan. You a hell of a fighter. Give us the fight, man. I'll pay $200 for a pay-per-view to watch that fight. I'm not gassing. I will pay $200 pay-per-view to watch Spence Crawford. Bud, you watching this. You listening. $200 pay-per-view to watch the fight. You probably don't even remember me, but I DM'd you on Instagram because I ran into you in Miami. I ran into you in Miami, and I couldn't catch up to you, so I DM'd you, and I said, yo, I just saw you at the jump on uh, Ocean Drive, you know what I mean? Like, yo, like, it'd be cool to get a pic with you, whatever, whatever. You messaged me back. I was sliced. I posted on my Instagram story. <laughs> I got a message back from Bud Crawford. Y'all can't believe it. He messaged me back. I was at the fight, man, but I couldn't get down to the ringside. Bud going to say, yeah, man, pull up. Like, I'm going to pull up and be ringside. <laughs> like, for real, yeah. I pulled up, but I was up in the stands. If I could have got a ringside and got a pick, I'd have been there. But, you know, I can't just pull up. You know what I'm saying? I tried. I tried to get ringside. I really did. Trust me. I was going to jump the jaw and everything and get down there on the field. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't worth going to jail. I live too far away to go to jail in Miami. But, yeah, man, bud, if you listen, if you watch it, man, let's make the fight happen, man. Do it for the fans. Do it for the fans. You know what I'm saying? We like y'all kids. We look up to y'all. The fans, we y'all kids. You know what I'm saying? Y'all do anything for y'all kids, right? I'm playing, look, 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 I'm playing that card, right? Right? <laughs> Give us the fight, man. Give us the fight. Promotional. Al Heyman. Bob Arum. Stop talking so damn much, Bob. Like Keith Thurman said, he said, Bob. Y'all remember that interview? Look, Bob. Your name is Bob. Let's make the fight happen. Put your pride to the side, Bob. Why can't we make this fight happen, man? 60, 40, 50, 50, 70, 30. I don't care what y'all do, but we need to see this fight. We got to, man. This is for the culture. This is for boxing. This is for the fans. This is history in the making, man. We have to see this fight. This fight cannot go beyond two years, man. We need to see this fight within two years. And I'm being dead serious. I'm going to speak it into existence. I'm going to manifest this. I'm going to manifest the hell out this fight. We need to see Bud Crawford 
and Arrow, the true Spence, in the ring before 2023. I'm going to put a stamp on it right now. Put my stamp on it. We will see Bud and we will see Arrow Spence in the ring before 2023. Put my stamp on it, man. All right? Man, look, man. That's all I'm going to hit y'all with today, man. Little episode. First episode of Bank Bank Boxing. First episode, I'm tired. You see my eyes, man. It's been a long day. I've been working, man. Terrible conditions, man. Terrible conditions at work, but we're not going to talk about that on Bank Bank. You say that for simple as that. But first episode, man, it's all love. I'm going to be talking so much more on here. Way more boxing. Make sure y'all follow me on Twitter at Bank Bank Boxing. I don't have a Bink Bink Boxing Instagram page because I got too many Instagram pages already. But I post all of my boxing talk on my personal. If you want to hear what I got to say about boxing, you want to get up to date on what's coming up next, upcoming fights, new fighters, you know what I'm saying? Anything like that, man. Check out my personal page. Request to follow J.H. Jr. underscore. That's my personal page. I post a lot of boxing on there. I might make a fourth Instagram page. Y'all tell me what y'all want to see because I get on people's nerves already. I talk too much. And I post a lot So if y'all want to see A fourth Instagram page You let me know What you want to see And I provide what you want to see Cause I'm a giver That's what I do That's what I do man But look man This was Bink Bink Boxing Make sure y'all tune in Tap into the podcast And I'll be with y'all again soon so Bink Bink baby <laughs>